I'm Mike Peterson with Loft Labs. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to sync ingress resources from your virtual cluster to the host cluster. We'll get a working Hello World app running on a custom domain with TLS. Then I'm gonna show you a quick demo on the generic resource syncer so that you can share cert manager CRDs from the host cluster to the virtual cluster and allow your users to manage their own cluster issuer. Let's get started. This demo is going to have a little bit of crossover with the last video we did. We need to set up a couple of things in the same way. So we're going to set up Nginx. We're going to set up our host names and everything so we can access the virtual cluster. To get started, like I said, we're going to install Nginx. What this is going to do is install the ingress controller like we did previously. We're going to set a controller, extra args, enable SSL pass through, which is going to allow us to send traffic to the vCluster API. And here we're going to get the load balancer using the same command that we used previously. We're gonna use that information to create a couple of resources. So first, we're gonna create a resource that is related to the vCluster. So in our case for this, it's gonna be demo.vcluster-demo.com. That's gonna give access to the vCluster. And then we're gonna use the same load balancer for our application. So we're gonna point our app vcluster-demo.com to the same load balancer. So make sure you keep this load balancer handy if you're doing the same thing or you're following along on your EKS cluster because you're going to need it for more than one resource. We're going to be using Ingress. That way we're not doing a load balancer per service. Okay, so next up, we have to install Cert Manager. This is just the current command to install Cert Manager. If you're watching this video and it's 2026 or something like that, you're probably going to need to change this command because there's probably a newer version of it. And now that we've installed Cert Manager, what we need to do next is create the cluster issuer. So we're going to use a cluster issuer for this demo. You can use an issuer if you want. I'm just doing a cluster issuer because that'll cover all namespaces, whereas an issuer is going to live within a namespace and you'll use that for that namespace. Here's the information that's within the cluster issuer. We're using Let's Encrypt. Got to add your email address in. You got to name the key secret reference, and then we're going to be using HTTP01, so it's going to do a HTTP01 challenge. Making sure that it can hit the domain and it's able to access on port 80 and check a file to make sure that you own it before it creates the certificate. So then what we need to do is create the ingress for the vCluster, and this is going to be in the demo vCluster ingress file. This is the same configuration that we used in the last demo. We're just setting up an ingress resource with SSL pass through for demo vCluster, and we're going to use the Nginx ingress uh, class name to make sure that we're using Nginx. And there's the host name demo.vcluster-demo.com. Next up, what we can do is we can create the vcluster. So with this first creation, it's a little bit different than the last one because what we're doing in this video is we're going to sync ingress from vcluster to the host cluster. So we're using the same command, but in the values file, there's another section that says sync ingress is enabled true. You need to add this to your values.yaml. And when you create the cluster or upgrade, update the cluster, you use this file, make sure it says sync ingresses enabled equals true. And then what we're gonna do is connect, get the kube config, and we're gonna show that we can do a couple of things with the kube config. We're getting namespaces. All right, we're in. Next up, we need to end up creating the application. So we're gonna use that same kube config. We're gonna install the application within our virtual cluster. So it's got a couple of things within it. So we're just gonna create app.yaml. And within there, you have a deployment, an ingress, and a service. So let's go and take a look at that real quick. It's just a normal hello world deployment. Uh, the ingress section, the only thing that you need to really add is an annotation saying, hey, use cert manager, which we just installed, uh, you know, use this cluster issuer to give me a certificate. And then we use the host for app.vcluster demo and pretty much standard ingress. Uh, so what we did is we created that. And now we're just showing that that ingress has been synced to the host cluster and the application has been deployed with a valid certificate. So app.vcluster-demo.com, it's just pointed to the same load balancer that we were using for vcluster the vcluster demo vcluster. So if we take a look at the ingress, we can see we have two records. We have one for app, we have one for demo. They're both pointed to the same load balancer. And then what we can do is get ingress on the actual vcluster itself. And we see that the name's a little bit different, right? Like that's within the vcluster gets rewritten to the host as something separate. So here's the, here's the ingress within there. And then what we'll do next is get the ingress class on the host cluster and then get the ingress class on the virtual cluster. And if you can check this out, it says Nginx on both of them. We're able to see both. That's because we're seeking ingress, but let's let's check cluster issuers. Okay, so on the host cluster, we're able to get the cluster issuer because that CRD exists. Now, we haven't done anything to make sure that CRD is exposed to the virtual cluster. We can do something where we sync ingress down to the host cluster, and then that resource will access this cluster issuer. Uh, in that case, what you need to do is tell your end user what cluster issuer to use or issuer if they're doing it in the same namespace. But that's information you got to provide to the user. What if you don't want to do that, right? Like, we'll take a look at that in a minute. If we use the kube config for vcluster and we say get cluster issuer, we're going to run into an error because the server doesn't have a resource type cluster issuer. We haven't shared the CRD there. We don't have cert manager installed on the virtual cluster. Uh, so here's 
a list of our synced resources that you can actually use. If you check out the vCluster docs, you'll be able to find this. So we're just using one. We're just doing ingress, but you can do a lot more than that, right? Like there's a whole listing here, like storage, class, persistent volumes, and, and a lot more. But these are kind of the defaults that you're going to have in Kubernetes anyways. What if you need to sync other resources? What if you need to sync something that we don't have in that list? Well, that's where the generic sync comes in. So let's take a look at generic sync. So what you need first is a plugin. So how do we install this? We do the vCluster create in the same way that we do with the values file, except we add another dash F and we say, this is the plugin. And now within the plugin, there's gonna be a couple of things that tell the vCluster what it needs to configure. So if we take a look at that real quick, what we can do is we can cat the plugin. And if we look at the top, we're doing, we've got a plugin for cert manager. We've got the image, which is the generic CRD plugin. We can look at RBAC and the extra rules to see what we're allowed to do. So what we're allowed to do with this is we're allowed to hit cert manager.io, which is gonna be the CRD for cert manager. We're saying we're gonna share up resources for cluster issuer and certificates. So you can do a create, delete, patch, update, get, list, watch. And then if we go a little bit further, we're telling the environment to configure version one, beta one of the generic CRD plugin. And then underneath that, we need to do a couple of mappings. So this is actually based on an example that we have in our GitHub repository, which is in the description below in case you want to check it out. And we're telling it we want to be able to we want to be able to sync cluster issuer so the user can create a cluster issuer within their virtual cluster and that'll be rewritten and synced down to the host cluster. And then we want to be able to let them create certificates. So this can be applied to other CRDs that we don't necessarily have within our native support. Like we get questions about cross plane and other things like this. This is how you would do that. There's also a from host cluster where you can sync from the host cluster to the virtual cluster. But right now we're just gonna focus on what can we sync from the virtual cluster down to the host cluster. And if you wanna know more about this, just go ahead and read the docs on it and then join our join our Slack. And then if you have questions or if you're trying to do something specific or special, let us know and we'll see if we can help out. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, I've actually, I've deleted the previous V cluster and I'm creating a new one, but I'm also showing you the upgrade option. If you wanna up, if you want to update your V cluster, you can use upgrade and then add in, you know, the, the updates, the values or the plugins. But we're creating a new one. I'm connecting, I'm getting the kube config again. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you with that kube config, so I'm accessing the V cluster, what CRDs I can see that match cert manager. Previously, this didn't exist, right? So I couldn't I couldn't get a cluster issuer before, but now I can create one within the V cluster and I'm able to manage that on my own. If say I'm using multiple namespaces or something like that and I'm a user, then this comes in handy. Otherwise, maybe I'm just using an issuer. And it's the same exact file that we were using on the base cluster. And then after that, what we can do is we can get that cluster issuer after it's been created. We're gonna go through and we're gonna create that application again using that same cluster issuer. And we're gonna make sure that there isn't a cluster issuer on the base cluster to, to show you that this is actually how it's working. So we're using that cluster issuer, it's getting synced down. All this stuff's getting reconciled and stuff. And then we can also get certificates too, because those are another another thing that actually lives within the V cluster. So we're gonna go take a look at the app again. We're gonna we're gonna look at it and trust me on this. We'll look at the general, but the time is different, the timestamp is different. This is a new certificate. I did delete the old certificate and stuff behind the scenes to make sure that we got something brand new and fresh. Now what we've done is we have, we've done two things. We have synced ingress to where we're using the host clusters ingress and cert manager and all of that stuff so that the user can just create an application with regular ingress and has to know a couple of annotations. And then instead of doing that, in case you have a different use case, we have also given the user the ability to create their own cluster issuer without installing the cert manager CRD on their own. That's managed on the base cluster. So they're not creating another version of cert manager that's running more pods and adding more workloads and stuff to the, the host cluster itself. This is just utilizing the base clusters, CRDs and configuration, but we gave the user a little bit more power so they can kind of manage it themselves because who wants to manage a bunch of issuers if they don't have to, but if you can just let your users create them, sure, go for it. All right. So that's our demo. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that was helpful. If you have questions or you want to see more about this, because some of it maybe went by a little bit quick, uh, let us know. I'll put some information in the description. There should be a GitHub link coming in the description that'll give you the different files stuff that I'm using just to do this demo in case you want to do it on your own. Uh, some information. So I'm just using EKS. I'm using like a, a T2 medium. So I'm not using something huge just to test these out. But for, for your use case, you might be using something different. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, please join our Slack if you have questions or if you have feedback. Uh, put some comments in below if you want to see any other types of videos or if you have questions about other CRDs, hopefully we can answer that. We may not have configured every single CRD, so we don't know exactly how it's gonna work, but we do have documentation on how you can do it. And maybe you can share that back and if you get that working. So thank you so much and stay tuned for another video for vCluster tips.